Well, thank you very much, Mr. President, for inviting me. Thank you very much, Maya, Sergei, and for your hospitality in St. Petersburg. Very nice city. I am very pleasure to be here. And um, what I'm speaking about is about the new paradigms in the treatment of uh, brain metastasis. Well, you know that uh, the brain metastasis is a very important pathology. We have many patients in the world. They are very related with cancer. And for example, from 20 to 40% of the patient with cancer have one brain metastasis during the life. In the last study, there are more or less or 5,100 patients with brain metastasis per year in the United States, and 8% in Sweden, for example. The, probably in the treatment of brain metastasis where the radio surgery has demonstrated is powerful because I think that the radio surgery in brain metastasis is probably the best treatment of the brain metastasis. But we are, why we have uh, more and more brain metastasis, metastasis in the brain? Because the population is getting older, MRI detects more brain metastasis, and this is very important, the systemic treatment improves the survival. If we control the primary tumor during many time, maybe we have more brain metastasis because the patient will live more time. It's mean that we have a circle, no? More lesion, better control local, radiation, radiation and we have to make more treatment with radio surgery. But during the last time, we have to change the paradigm. We know that all the scientific is working about some kind of paradigms, and the old paradigms in the treatment of brain metastasis are that the whole brain radiotherapy is the best treatment, that we can treat the multiple brain metastasis only with brain radiotherapy, that uh, all brain radiotherapy did not uh, have major side effect and the radio surgery is not so efficacious in the treatment of brain meds. This is not true. I will explain to you during my conference that we changed all these paradigms. The first paradigm we changed that this was the classic biology of distribution of brain metastasis from primary tumor to blood distribution and the implantation to the brain. You know that the the metastasis are extra axial tumor. They implant to the brain. There are not the tumor that are coming from the normal tissue of the brain. This old schema of the treatment change. This is another new schema of the, of the implantation of the brain mass. We have two new concepts. The concept of seed and soil, which is the concept, is the capacity of the cell, metastasis cell, to implant it to the brain, tissue and the capacity of the brain tissue to receive, to receive, to make reception of this, uh, of this cell. And this is some glucoproteins in the brain, in the uh, cerebral tissue, that can uh, make possible the implantation of the uh, metastatic cell into the brain. We change from the classic to the new concept of implantation which is are the goal of the treatment of the patient with brain metastasis, are local control, distal control, survival, and quality of life. This is our big uh, duty, and this is our big uh, work to do with the, the patient. What can we compare about survival and quality of life? I think that I will explain that are in the same position. We have to have survive in one hand, and we have to have quality of life on the other hand, is very important. Let's we go through the, the philosophy of the treatment. In the first time, the, uh, the whole brain radiotherapy was very important. Those are the history began in 1999 with some publication uh, in New England of Journal Medicine, and they explained that the whole brain therapy was the solution of this. But let's we go through or the first conclusion is that in the patient with one metastasis surgery plus whole brain radiotherapy is better than whole brain radiotherapy alone. This is a new concept. Yeah, we began to change. There are, uh, if we compare the surgery of the brain metastasis, we can see that only the surgery we have a high recurrency. And if we make surgery on whole brain radiotherapy, the recurrency is lower. It's very important concept. 
Why? Because everybody knows that we have an axial tumor, but who makes surgery know that there are some infiltration of the cell into cerebral tissue? It means that we can take out the metastasis, but we are not sure that we take out all the tumoral cells. For this reason, we need to make radiotherapy after the uh, surgery. And this is a very interesting scheme that demonstrates that this is the tumor, and these are the infiltration around the tumor. For this reason, to make it radiation later is uh, very important. Well, the, the question is to make whole brain radiotherapy before or after the, radio, after the surgery. It means that they demonstrate there is no difference in the survival. And the other conclusion we make it is better whole brain radiotherapy after surgery than surgery alone. And if we are speaking about the one metastasis, the combination of both is better than both alone. We change one concept. This means that we change the concept that we can make only all brain radiotherapy. Let's we go on along. There is very important, the basic publication, the RTOEG study, 9408, they make, they establish some basis of treatment of brain metastasis. And they, for the first time, they put the concept of radio surgery, and they demonstrate that it is no change in survival if we compare radio surgery alone with radiosurgery on whole brain radiotherapy. Maybe we have more distant control, but if I'm speaking about the survival, there is no difference. And this is another conclusion. Or brain therapy, more radiosurgery, the best treatment for one metastasis, and have to be taken in consideration for two or three. Another new concept, radiosurgery. We begin to the whole brain radiotherapy, surgery, and now we became to radio surgery. New concept of the treatment. Let's we go uh, alone. We are speaking now about the treatment of one metastasis, but what's happened with more than one metastasis? I think that we change another paradigm, that we can treat more than one metastasis. We can treat from one to three metastasis with using of uh, all brain radiotherapy and radio surgery. And this is another concept that you have that the whole brain radiotherapy did not improve the survival in the patient with one to four brain metastasis treated with either surgery, but it can improve the distant recurrence. It means that if we can add whole brain radiotherapy in the patient treated with either surgery, we have not more survival, but we have more distant control. We change another very important paradigm. But what's happened this time? Another phenomenon is happening to the patient with lung uh, survival, neurocognitive uh, function. We have seen that the patient that we are making whole brain therapy have changing in uh, neurocognitive patient. This is very, very important study made in the last uh, oncology that demonstrate that the patient which receive whole brain therapy have many problems in the functional uh, neuroconjunction function. And this is a very interesting study that he compared the group would make only radio surgery with a group would make radio surgery on brain radiotherapy. You can compare compare 20% of uh, neurocognitive disturbance, and this is 60 per, 64% that uh, they have pathology in the functional neurocognitive function. This is very important point because our patient is living more and more two, three years, but we need not only survive it, what I told before, but we live also quality of life. And for this reason, the conclusion is that uh, more neurocognitive deterioration in patients with radio surgery, whole brain radiotherapy, than radio surgery alone, even with recurrence. It's very important because this changed a big paradigm. You know that the last meeting of Astro demonstrated that in many pathology, the whole brain radiotherapy is not necessary nowadays. <clears throat> there is some example of the patient treated with whole brain therapy that we have a leukoencephalomalatia. It's very important. We affect the memory uh, after the treatment with whole brain radiotherapy. And this is a very important phase three study that demonstrates the neurocognitive deterioration, learn, and memory after the treatment with whole brain 
radiotherapy. Well, what can we do to, to prevent this, this phenomena? This is a very important hippocampal spartan. Now and day, we did not treat patients with whole brain therapy without hippocampal sparring. We can preserve because we know exactly where are the function of memory and learn. And there are an hippocampus. And this is our plan in the treatment of the patient. You can see that we exclude the hippocampus from the treatment and we preserve this part of the brain. You know that only 2% of the metastasis can be located in the hippocampus. For this reason, sparring the hippocampus, we can prevent, this is a very interesting demonstration, we can prevent the, the effect in neurocognitive function. Well, what's happened with radio surgery? You can see a very interesting slide that in 1991, in all world, we are making only 1,000 patient treated with radio surgery. You know what's happened in 2010? 226 patients have been treated with radio surgery. We changed a very big concept from whole brain radiotherapy to radio surgery. And this, this slide demonstrates how in the last year, the radio surgery treatment is very uh, interesting, a very powerful weapon in the treatment of the brain metastasis. But this is another important, what's happened? in the United States. In 1993, we make um, around uh, 5,000 right, surgical, uh, surgical intervention in the brain and 1,200 radio surgery. But in 2011, the things change. We make 7,000 surgery in the brain of central nervous system and we are making about 8,300 radio surgery. We make the concept from surgery to radio surgery because we see the efficacy of the radio surgery. And if you compare the treatment evolution of survival, you can see the surgery, radio surgery, and radio surgery more or brain radiotherapy are in the same condition. But did not forget, do not forget that if we are doing or brain radiotherapy, we maybe have neurocognitive function problems. Well, the question is, how many metastases can we treat? This was a big problem. I think that in 2010, I present to American Congress of Radio Surgery that the number of the metastases is not a problem. It's not a problem of the number, but only the problem of the volume. This is a very interesting concept because the last publication demonstrated that the number of of uh, metastasis that we have to treat the radio surgery is not the problem. And this is the uh, last one, published in Lancet Oncology, that demonstrated that the radio surgery for the multiple brain metastasis is very useful, is very useful treatment. And those are, in this study, they demonstrate that the patient until from five to 10 brain metastases can have the same result that the patient from one to four metastases who for long survival and with a good quality of, uh, of life. It means that I treated patients with 20 brain metastases, eight, seven, and five in three different times. And this study demonstrated that the patient until 10 metastases can have a good survival. My patient that I treat with 20 uh, metastases did not die from the brain metastasis. She died from primary tumor. If we can control the primary tumor, we can have good result in the treatment of brain metastasis. You know that everybody is working with uh, GIA or with uh, guidelines of NCCN. There is a big error in, this line, in those guidelines because they treat all the metastases in one group. There are not the same all the metastases. There are different, the metastases from melanoma to metastases from prostate cancer to metastases from lung cancer. We cannot treat all the metastases in the same way. What does it mean? For example, that in the small cell cancer, lung cancer, maybe we have to make radiotherapy. But if we have, for example, melanoma, the radiotherapy is not useful we cannot achieve 
achieve the uh, radiobiologic doses of a treatment of, for example, a renal cancer cell tumor. We cannot use wall brain radiotherapy because it's not effective. We have to go to high dose to control this pathology. And this is the big error of the guidelines of the NCCN. We make in our group another distribution of the treatment of brain metastasis. We treat it in the metastasis depending to the primary tumors. It's more, uh, it's more uh, clear and it's more effective to treat the, all the patients in different ways. We have lung cancer, breast cancer, melanoma, and colon and kidney cancer. Each of these pathology have to be treated in different way. For example, in microthetic cancer, we can make radiotherapy, but in melanoma, we can make only radiosurgery. It's very important to have this idea of the treatment. We can treat also about the volume, what I told you before. It's not important the number of the brain metastasis. The most important is the total volume of the metastasis that we are treating. And uh, because it's not directly related with the metastasis, but it's there is related with the normal tissue surround the metastasis. For us, it's very important, not the metastasis, but the normal brain, because we need to treat. But first of all, we need to protect the brain for the radiation. Therefore, we classify this in relationship with the, the global uh, tumor volume and it's, it's clear that we have to base it RPA, there is a basic classification. GPA is another classification of it, but anyway, that's, I think that we still function about RPA classification. Yes. Well, what's happened now in the future? We are treating brain metastasis, but we have not only brain metastasis, we have spine metastasis also. What to do with spine metastasis? I think that this is the big step in radio surgery using the technology <coughs> of treating of metastasis of the spine. You can see that using the high technology as CyberNight, we can treat this, we compare the different way using a different technology. In this place, you can see that with CyberKnife, we can make irradiation of the tumor, but we are not making irradiation of the medulla. And the new technology permit us to make this kind of the treatment. I demonstrate to you a case that uh, we publicate and we gain the third international pri prize for this uh, patient, 20, 40 years old, 48 years old patient, a lot of brain metastasis, with a breast cancer. We make with this patient um, a lot of treatments. He began the history in, in 2006. It's very long history of this patient. She's very well treated because she began in 2006. They have different lesions in every part of the body. We make radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and those we make in my department, he have five tumors. Three of them are big tumors, and we have two small tumors. And we make a surgery. We take out this tumor here and this tumor here. We make, in the, in the same time, we make surgery, uh, two, two parts of the brain surgery, and therefore we make use of the radiotherapy with tomotherapy, with integral both to the tumor. And you can see that we make the radiotherapy by tomotherapy, make radiosurgery in three of the tumor. We make the radiosurgery of the two mm, small lesion, and the patient is quite well. You can see MRI four years later that there is no brain metastasis in all the residue. Well, we can see the, the change in the surgery, but there are no active metastasis. But what's happened? The patient was in very good condition. But in uh, May of 2011, this is an MRI to control. There's, there is no pathology in the brain, but we have a very, uh, we have a very important uh, spine lesion. We have a spine lesion, and this spine lesion we make radio surgery, 40 grain one for 40 grade in the in the medulla with very, very good result on this patient going. Uh, she was alive until uh, May 2000, 2050. It's mean that nine years 
after the surgery without problem. On this, we make uh, the conclusion paradigms in my point of view that the single session or hyperfractionation treatment of malignant tumor provides high local effect. Is new paradigm. Radioresistant brain metastasis respond to radio surgery quite well. It's very important to know it. You are speaking about melanoma or renal cancer. The number of brain metastasis is not relevant, but the volume is. Do not forget it, that we have to take in consideration not the number, but the volume. World brain radiotherapy has major side effect. Don't forget it. Neurocognitive uh, effect of the world brain radiotherapy. Dose homogeneity is essential in the treatment of malignant tumor. It's very important also that you, we have to give all the dose to all the tumor. And recurrent, a new metastasis after fractionated radiotherapy, world brain radiotherapy can be treated with radio surgery. And I demonstrate to you our book about radio surgery is the first in Spanish and Ibero Latin American about radio surgery. And we make our personal guideline in the treatment of uh, uh, brain metastasis. And what Arbler Stein is telling that the things are not changing if you are acting in the same way. You have to change the paradigms. If you change the paradigm, we will have better results. Thank you very much. Thank you for the exciting presentation. I think we can postpone all the questions uh, to the end where we have time for discussion.